Welcome to my channel, fellow Rotorheads. My apologies for taking so long to put out a substantive video. I struggled for a while trying to figure out exactly what I was going to say. And every time I started, I undermined the point I was going to make. But I think I got it now. As you know, my focus in this genre is on the realism of helicopter simulation. I used to do DCS and focused on the Huey, which was very nice of course, but the military angle was a little off-putting. It's hard enough to focus on flying a rather convoluted piece of machinery without being shot out of the sky every few minutes. Life was definitely hard for those Vietnam era chopper pilots. But after Microsoft made Flight Dynamics native, I switched to that so I didn't have to dodge missiles anymore. And realism being something within me, I think from a deep-seated desire to be a real pilot, there really isn't anything that competes with the scenery in Microsoft Simulator. Not that there isn't room for improvement, of course there is, lots of room. But there's a thriving amateur modding landscape for just that purpose. There's still a lot missing, but so much has been added onto that basic framework, there really isn't anything that remotely competes with it. But recently, I've had a number of issues with my PC having technical problems. Microsoft stalling during the loading process and even my Pimax crystal has been finicky and I'll probably have to do a video about that. I finally gave up and bought X-Plane just to have something to fly. Some people have commented that Microsoft Simulator is not realistic and that X-Plane is really where the realism is. Well I spent some time in it now and I've noticed some differences. So much so that I decided to just seek out a similar and developed a chopper model in all three simulators and compare them to each other. My favorite, the MD500. That's originally what this video was about. But as I tried to tease out the differences between them, I realized those differences were largely too subtle to really make a point about. Now I'm speaking strictly of helicopter flight dynamics. If you want to make beans out of this fixed wing aircraft or that, I'm not really interested in that. Maybe this simulator is better, maybe it's worse, I don't know. I'm interested in rotorcraft. And from that perspective, my feeling is that the basic mechanics of the controls are all about the same in all three simulators. DCS, Microsoft, and X-Plane. All about the same and correct. And I think my greatest proof in that is the ability to fly and hover the actual MD-500. Flying straight and level that's the easiest thing to do in a helicopter, and most people can do that if you advise them not to be too aggressive. But hovering, yeah, that's one of the tricky aspects, and I was able to hold it in place on my first try. There's no way I'd be able to do that without a substantial amount of time on a simulator with some reasonable approximation to the real thing. And by that I mean if you want to try your hand at a real helicopter, you're going to have to imitate the physical environment. The joystick is easy enough, but you're going to have to get some kind of collective and a set of pedals because you have to train your muscles to do the heavy lifting for you. You will not be able to translate a twist grip and a joystick paddle to the real thing in real time. A helicopter is just too sensitive and easy to swing out of control unless you're on it and thinking ahead. I saw a video recently of a helicopter pilot saying that if the pilot died, he had absolutely no faith that anyone else could have any hope of landing the helicopter successfully without advanced training. I could be wrong, but isn't it every sim pilot's secret desire to have the opportunity to save the day and end up on the news? The pilot had a medical emergency and the passenger managed to land the aircraft? That's allegedly already happened with a fixed wing aircraft. I think it's probably the case it's never happened with a helicopter. And just as well, because I believe most of the time, passenger helicopters have the co-pilot controls removed for safety. So if the pilot dies, it's going to be a bad day for everyone, sim pilot or otherwise. But getting back to the differences between the simulators, I thought I'd keyed on to something notable. That is, this peculiarity about the DCS OH-6, a predecessor to the MD-500. If you try to lift off smoothly, you start to slide to the right. To counteract this, you have to roll to the left. But when you do that, as you lift off, the helicopter rebalances in the air. And if you don't recenter, you start careening off to the left. And if you do recenter, it's kind of hard to do it exactly right. So there's this recentering wobble that happens. If you do it enough times, you can start to get a feel for it and do it somewhat elegantly. But I thought this was 
very strange behavior. And at that point, I concluded that DCS, or its OH6 model, was not accurate. And to illustrate my point, I found a video of Mr. D taking off from his trailer. And look at that. He leans to the left, straightens out, and the skid wipes the trailer. Which is exactly what happens in DCS. The correlation between DCS and the real thing is remarkable. I asked Mr. D if he knew that's what happens, and he said yes, when he takes off, he twitches to the left. His words. He has to do it more on the trailer, less on dirt, because of the traction, but it's still something that he does. The reason, of course, is because helicopters don't fly straight. There's a torque effect. I'm thinking it's a lot like really powerful trucks or tractors. When their engines have to apply a huge amount of rotational force, it ends up causing, in a sense, an equal and opposite reaction. The frame the engine is attached to is also being forced to pivot in the opposite direction, counteracted either by the ground itself, or in this case, the weight of the helicopter. But spinning a giant rotor fan, sucking huge amounts of air, needs enough force to pivot the helicopter body, forcing it to kind of fly cockeyed, one skid higher than the other. And at no point is more force applied than when taking off and landing. So as a helicopter crawls its way into the air, it takes off one skid first, causing this imbalance coming up. And I'm guessing the one skid vibrating with the rotor plus the force of the tail rotor causes this sideways skid, which on a trailer, of course, would be an exciting way to start a flight. So in order to keep the helicopter steady and stable, you have to counter force to the left so that it doesn't want to skid away sideways. But once in the air, you have to stop that or you're going to go careening to the left. The whole takeoff process is very delicate, nuanced, and not intuitive. And DCS captured that. I then concluded that DCS got it right and the others did not. But performing the same exercise with the other simulators, I discovered no, they actually do that too. And as Mr. D said, to a different extent depending on ground traction. I decided to try this maneuver with the Huey, which I have across two simulators, and I got mixed results. I couldn't get either one of them to do this takeoff dance. So in fairness, that just confuses me. Are the simulators accurate and Hueys don't do this? Why is that? Do they not follow the same aerodynamic principles? Or are both Huey models not accurate? Am I obsessing a bit over what might be considered a triviality? Maybe a bit, but again, my pursuit is realism in simulation. I want to feel like I'm flying the real thing. This is gaming, but raised to the highest possible level. I'm not playing the Super Mario Kart of helicopters, I'm chasing the most real implementation of a simulator available for home use. If trivialities don't figure into your frame of mind and you're just jacking around, it would be like climbing into a real Ferrari after practicing on Mario superkarts and thinking you're going to drive well. Probably not. Then I performed a bunch of landings and yes, there were differences. Some were quite aggressive with vortex ring state, others more subtle. As far as the fringe cases, there was a smattering of attention paid to hot starting the engine or random engine failures. To DCS's credit, I was able to get it to really object to over torquing the engine, but then it didn't respond to my efforts to auto rotate safely, so I'd give that a B minus, I guess. And to my surprise, I was able to mass bump the rotor the f off the Huey's fuselage. You gotta respect that. Fellas, don't try to barrel roll your Huey the way you can an MD500. The Huey does not like it. Treat your two blade rotor with respect and dignity, and you'll live to tell your friends you get to fly a Huey. But ironically, I was unable to get the Huey to over torque. So at best, the results displayed a rather casual inconsistency in adherence to reality. To summarize the performance report, all the simulators get the basic flight dynamics right and then do an inconsistent job of capturing the more nuanced and fringe elements of chopper flight. And near as I can tell, none of them bothered to address things like loss of tail rotor effectiveness and settling with power, 
which can account for quite catastrophic results in the real world. As to which is closest to the real thing, at least as far as an MD500 goes, according to me, I'd have to have another shot at Mr. D's chopper to know. I think I can say with some confidence that in comparing all three to each other, probably Microsoft is a little fluid. It kind of feels like flying underwater. When you take into consideration how different all the chopper models feel from each other, I don't think it's a really big deal in the sense that, generally speaking, all the chopper models fly essentially the same, excepting, of course, the moving platform models like the Airbus choppers. The idiosyncratic behavior of most of the chopper models are basically the same, and what you feel are the little personality differences between them, the weight, the responsiveness, the sound, the squirreliness, and these things are different enough that they kind of swap out how any given simulator treats the flight model. Meaning, if you can figure out how to fly any of these models, when you get into a real one and it feels somewhat different, well, that's just another personality overlay on top of the basic controls and functions that you have to get used to. So, I'm inclined to say, overall, either DCS or X-Plane is closer to a real MD500 than Microsoft, but next time I have the privilege of sitting shotgun to Mr. D, I'll set up the cameras and do a video confirming which is the simulator king. And ultimately, the reverse test would be even better. If I can get Mr. D to try my simulators and judge which feels closest to his rig, wouldn't it be funny if he proclaimed none of them felt real to him? Probably not haha -ha funny to any of us, but let's leave that on the table for now. And finally, though it doesn't have anything to do with helicopter flight regimes, I have to give a shout out to DCS's native rotor wash effects. It is, after all, an aspect of realism that you just don't see in either Microsoft or X-Plane. And so overall, the attention DCS pays to realism in general is quite remarkable given its military focus. So props to them, and hopefully in the next video I'll be able to give you my take on which one of the big three feels closest to the MD. I hope you found this video interesting and informative, and until next time, may the feeling of that rotor wash over you. Huh? Yeah, boy! Yeah, boy!